when I was 25. Hmm. Well, I was obsessed. Um, 25, so that would have been 87. I'd been in graduate school for two years. Well, you know, um, when I was 25 or so, I probably weighed about 138 pounds. I smoked like a pack of cigarettes a day. I drank tremendous amount of alcohol. I was from northern Alberta, this rough little town up in northern Alberta called Fairview. And, you know, there were long winters there and my friends were heavy drinkers and most of them dropped out of school by the time they were 15 or 16, went off to work on the oil rigs. And, you know, it was a rough town and we drank a lot. And I started when I was 14 and, you know, um, and so I was, I had a lot of bad habits, let's say, and uh, things that were, and I wasn't in great shape physically. And I was also still intellectually obsessed by, as I am now. And uh, so that would have been, that would have been in 85. But when I, but I decided around then about 85, 84, something like that, maybe a little earlier that I was really going to try to get my act together. And uh, so I started doing that. I, you know, I, first of all, I, I quit smoking. Well, that took a long time because I eventually had to quit drinking too in order to quit smoking. And I started working out and playing sports, which I'd never done. I was a small kid. I'd been skipped a grade and I was a small, small for my age. So sports were never, especially team sports, were never really a domain of expertise for me. Um, although I skied and went trapping with my dad and went, you know, cross country skiing and camping and all that. So, but uh, when I went to graduate school, I started swimming <laughs> the first the first uh physical exercise routine i did i enrolled in a ex swim exercise course i think it was called so it was me and this like really overweight kid and like these 60 year old women and men they could out exercise me like mad it was really embarrassing me and the, the overweight kid you know we'd be just panting ourselves three quarters to death at the end of the bloody workout and these 60 year old women who weren't in great shape were like you know chatting away uh, as if nothing was going on at all in the pool. So that was quite embarrassing. And as was going to the weight room, you know, because when I started, I could barely best bench press 75 pounds and people used to keep coming over and helping me, which was the last thing I bloody well wanted, but certainly needed. And I got to the point where I could bench press 225 pounds. I think that was the best I did. And I gained about 30 pounds of muscle in a year and a half. So that was a good thing. So, like, I was kind of a wild man, and, you know, I'm a little bit manic in my, in my uh, temperament, and so, you know, I was, I was kind of going every direction at the same time. So, and, uh, you know, I don't regret that. I had a fine time when I was a kid, and, but uh, I needed really to get disciplined, and I had to do it because I was working on these hard problems that, you know, that I've been discussing with all of you, and I've been working on them really, you know, obsessively since I was probably about 18, maybe even earlier than that. And got to the point around 25 when I was in graduate school trying to get my PhD, so doing all my research. Like I published 15 papers by the time I graduated with my PhD, which was by, I think, by a fairly large measure, the most papers that any graduate student at that time had ever published at McGill. I think that's right. Might've been twice as many or maybe twice as many, maybe even three times as many. And at the same time, I wrote Maps of Meaning, which was a terrible, terrible, terribly difficult thing to do because I was writing about three hours a day doing that and I couldn't do all that and continue with my misbehavior you know my sort of my what what would you say my 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 hedonistic my hedonistic my massive hedonistic consumption of alcohol and all of that I just couldn't keep it up and also work seriously on the issues that were at hand so you know I had to stop that's a sacrifice I had to stop messing about and straighten myself out and I I got married well my the woman who's my wife Tammy who who I've known since she was eight years old she lived across the street from me in this little town called Fairview and I was in love with her like the first time I saw her which is quite the bloody thing so that's worked out pretty well for me but she came to live with me about the same time and you know we decided jointly to get our act together and we swore that we tell each other the truth which I think she's actually done better than me like I don't think I don't think she's lied to me ever in our entire marriage which is unbelievable you know and it's been so useful because i can really tell her things and we can really talk so i tell you if you want to have a good relationship man you embed it in the truth because if you don't embed it in the truth you don't have a relationship it's it's just lies it's it's a tissue of lies and it will it will dissolve in the chaos as soon as the crisis comes along so the truth is a terrible thing but not not compared to falsehood so 
all right so let's look at the live chat here 